Nicholas Pepe was, of course, Arsenal's record signing back in the day. He's been reflecting on that time. At Arsenal, I suffered a kind of trauma, as if my passion had been ripped away from me. I had a disgust for football. I doubted myself to the point that I thought about quitting everything. Frank LeBeouf with us. Frank, what do you make of it when you read those quotes? Well, I can understand when he first signed for, for Arsenal, and I followed him when he was in Lille and, and, and before his previous club, I was very um, optimistic about his performances because he was absolutely fantastic. He belonged to the uh, uh, first 11 in the league uh, overall and uh, he did the job. And I, when he signed for 80 million, I thought it would be it would be perfect match for, for the Gunners. It turned out that it never worked, that the pressure was too big for him. And it's why he explained, and I can understand that. And at some point, I can understand also that it can be, could be discussed about um, the football overall. And I'm happy to know that uh, he's getting better. Um, but you can be both like 2 million, 10 million, 40 million, 80 million. It doesn't change. The pressure is there. It depends on the club you sign. It's not the, for me, it's not the money that the club spent. It's the club that he turned, turned, uh, turned in, that he changed the, the pressure that he had. Uh, when you play for Lille, it's like a family club. When you play for Arsenal, it's, it's a big club around the world and you expect results and quickly. And it didn't happen to him, so the pressure became bigger and bigger and he was drawn into the, that pressure. It's sad because of, I think he was a fantastic player. He missed that. Uh, that was a big turn in his career and it, it happened to many, many players. But for me, it's not the price tag, uh, in fact, which counts, is how you handle the pressure that you have and the shoulder that you are, the, the pressure on the shoulder that you have playing for a big, big club. That's how we see Bellingham, for example, coming from Dortmund, being in Real Madrid, paying tons of million, no problem. I come here, I mm. play, easy for me. That's, that's different. It depends on the player. It makes a selection as well on between a top, top player and a not that top player. It's interesting to see, because you talked about this, you know, back in your Liverpool days, obviously Liverpool top of the top, yeah. and you'd buy players who were brilliant at their level, but that move up just was too much. Yeah. But there isn't a straightforward answer to that. And there's no way of gauging that? There's absolutely no way of gauging it whatsoever. You can, you can dig as deep as you want into the character of the player. Clearly, obviously, it's easier to look at the talent because you watch games and you watch them playing. Yeah. But all the factors, when you put them and you mix them all together, the price tag, the wages, the expectation, you know, was Pepe on his own? Did he have his family with him? I mean, so many things. But the most important thing for a footballer is playing well. And when you don't, all of a sudden you look in the mirror and you have to answer the question and try and figure it out. And if you can't, then it sounds like what happens is what happened to Pepe. You just seemingly go... Is it a day one thing? Or it, like, do, you, do, you, do you know that you, your teammates know that you aren't as good as you should be? Listen, I, think, I think everybody, when they go somewhere, has a certain period of time where they'll allow it to settle in. Yep. Regardless of whether it's the dressing room, on yep. the field. But then there comes a stage when, OK, you've had enough time in the dressing room, you've had enough time on the field, we've paid £72 million for you, you're going to have to produce. Right. And then that, that now then becomes a complete and utter one-dimensional one thing. Mentally, it's up to you to figure it out, what the problem is. And if you can do that, then you can go forward. If you can't do that, and the club don't know how to help you, then I think what you're listening to is a guy who just was lost. Every player has pressure. Sure. Now, I, I can't talk for his mental disposition, he was pretty awful at Arsenal. And when, and there might be various reasons for that, I, I, I don't know. But that, that is kind of factually was not good enough for what they thought. Uh, and when you're having a bad time, you either sink or you swim, right? It's all very well being this guy that does all the tricks and scores goals when everything's hunky-dory. But when there's a club like Arsenal who... You talk about Liverpool when at the top, they were at the top and they haven't been for a while. Mm -hmm. And they were, and their supporters were desperate to get <coughs> to that pinnacle. 
And when somebody comes in with a price tag, you know, there is more expected of a 72 million uh, signing than there is a 7 million. That's just fact. Uh, and so these are the pressures that you know when you're a player. But unfortunately, like any walk of life, everybody handles things differently. We've all seen players who are probably more talented than some of the guys that are in a team and yet can't perform at the level needed because the pressure affects them differently. Right. That's, that's just your makeup. There's nothing... It's, it's difficult to change that. You can go and sit in front of a psychologist all you want and he can talk to you all you want. But when you get out there, right, and fans are on top of you and things are not going well, you, we all handle things differently, don't we? It's a lonely yeah, place, isn't it? You're on, you're on your own. You are on it's your not, own. It's not, like, it's not like a coach who can change the tactics, can change the players. Coaches can do a lot of things. As a player, when you're, when you're struggling and you're going through a bad time, the only person that can really change it is you. And if you're mentally not strong enough to figure it out and stick with it, then you're going to, you're going to sink, as Craig said. And, and, that's, and that's just a fact. There's no, there's, no, there's no easy or straightforward answer. Whatever's going on inside each of us individually is what will either make you go forward or go backwards. I, I know this is a very different scenario because it's a team sport, yeah? But if someone comes in here and is getting paid a million dollars to do my job but they're doing it badly... Why would I help them? Why would I want them to do well? Because basically, look, I want you to go away, so I'm yeah, back no, to being, being number two one. Us, the two of us will try and help him. Like, how much is there responsibility on teammates to try and help him, to try and get him to that level? Or how much is it going... Well, you've so come in as a record signing. Right. You're earning a lot more money than me. Why should I help you? Again, it's, it's not... Again, I'm willing to bet you that there weren't that many players, if any, knew how desperate Pepe was. Because you walk through the gates of whatever club you're playing, you walk through the dressing room, you can't start, you can't start a pity party. Oh, no, I don't feel... You know, it, it doesn't... You put a face on. I see. 99 players out of 100 will stick... As soon as they walk through the dressing room door, they'll peel that face off that, that really yeah. is real and stick another one on. And everybody will be like, oh, he's, he's smiling. And, and then as soon as you go in the car and drive home... Yeah. You're driving home, you're like a zombie. That's, that's just, again, the reality. Players, players, when it comes to the dressing room and their teammates, will keep things like that away from people. I mean, you can help... I mean, you can put an arm around them. We've all been in dressing rooms uh, where somebody's on a downer. There's only so much you can do. Mm. There is, no, as Stevie said, no, nobody's going to help you. They're going to try and help you, but the only person that can drag yourself out of a rut is you. Now, whether that be changing your lifestyle, whether it's training harder, whether it's staying behind for it, whatever it is, it might help you. But at the end of the day, when you go on the field, and I don't know how really your teammates can help any more than they're doing, unless they've been unprofessional on the field right. and not passing it to them, which I don't think was the case. And the other side of it is you're asking why would they help? Well, if he's in there, and I don't know if he was, if he's in there and he's the biggest earner, say, just for argument's sake, and other players weren't earning as much. But if he can improve my team and we can become a winning team and my performance is improved... And the knock-on effect. There's a knock-on effect that we're all getting new contracts and we're all getting a wage rise and we're all getting uh, the plaudits. Uh, but it can go the opposite way. So that's why, I mean, we all sat in dressing rooms. Listen, we all know that there's always somebody in dressing rooms, usually a lot, who's on more door than you. Right. right? And the players are always sneaking around <laughs> trying to <laughs> see what's happening. Yeah. But there always is. There always is, and there's no point beating yourself up about somebody earning more than you. You've got to still go out there and perform. And look, clearly here there was a guy who came in. It's always difficult going to a foreign country. I don't know his family situation. You could be in a hotel for six months. Some players have been in a hotel for a year. Others settle quickly. There are lots of factors when you go to a club. It's not just... And this is behind the scenes when you don't see it. People think... I, everybody who moves clubs... Never mind, to a, never mind to a new country. Even when you move within, say, England, or go from Scotland to England, like Stevie or I, or France to England, which is obviously a bigger move for Frank. I don't care if you're Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, whoever you are, you need help. Yeah. You need help. You can't do it on your own. You need a structure to help you, and it is still difficult. So for these players moving, we just don't know the story, but we do know it was a struggle for them.
Did, just so people understand what a dressing room's like. So remember the story I told you about Paul Walsh? We had a guy called Paul yep. Walsh, who was a centre forward for us, great player, scored goals, had gone about 14 games without scoring a goal, right? And he walked in the dressing room, and one of the lads went to him, Walshie, what is it you do again when you score? I mean, that's a dressing room. <laughs> you won't be allowed that's to do that. That's why I'm saying, you know, when you walk in the dressing it's not very room... very positive. If you I'll show, tell like that. If you, I mean, again, again, maybe it's different today, but certainly in my day, I'm assuming <laughs> in hers, when you walk in and show any sort of weakness, then people will just dive on you and yeah. think it's funny. So you're not going to be, as I said, you're not going to start the pity party because you know it's not probably going to come, unless it's your busy mate who's, sure. who's trying to help you. But that's what a dressing room's like, Walshie. What is it you do? <laughs> I don't remember what you do when you score. Go on, Frank. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm with the guys in the, in the way that you need to wear a mask of facade, let's say, in the dressing room, mm. pretending that everything goes right, if, if, even if you know that it's not the case. But I always manage to have a, a kind of social network inside the dressing room where I talk to one or two, like Roberto Di Matteo, for example. I say, Roberto, if I'm going the wrong way, will you be able to or capable of telling me. Um, I never said to Craig to tell me if I was talking too much. He never, he never told me. But, uh, but um, <laughs> it's true that it's, it's something that you can manage to, to find. And uh, if you play, let's say, a centre-back and you see your striker having a problem, I think you can go to, 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 and see him and just maybe one sentence can maybe switch on something. Like saying, you know, I saw you playing before you came here and I saw you scoring goal and scoring goal. You are an absolutely fantastic player and I believe that you can help us out. Can you help us out, please? Because we need you. Maybe that's something who might change the guy attitude or might not, but you can try at least. I believe, and I, it's right, that we, are, can, we can be very tough. I remember Chris Sutton when he signed for Chelsea, you not know, scoring goals. People were saying, did we keep the coupon, you know, to, to sell him back? That's so harsh and so unfair. But you, the you were the one saying that, Frank. Of... No, that wasn't me. I wouldn't say the name. That wasn't me. That, that was somebody else. <laughs> but, so it, because it was very important in the club, I won't say who was that, but who, who it was. But, but really, it's possible to, to reverse something. Maybe at the time when Nicolas Pepe were there, no, well, there nobody was capable of telling him, what he thought because he didn't know him. And the price tag was too big because nobody knew him. I was bought 2.5 million. That was the record signing for Chelsea. But at the end of the day, it's only 2.5 million. It's not 18 million. Even if it's 20 years after, 18 million, it's huge. It, that, that, that's so hard to, to handle. On top of it, when you are not known, if you are somebody who already proven to the world that you're capable of doing something, when you're going to be, when you're going to come into the dressing room, you're going to be well received because they're going to enjoy see, uh, seeing you because they know that you, what you can bring. But when you're Nicolo Pepe coming from Mill, being paid 80 million with a big expectation, nobody knows who you are, so they don't know and they're not, they're not going to say anything. So it's hard. It's a big, it's complex. It's, uh, it's complicated. And, uh, but I believe that. I believe in a little bit of humanity at some point in the dressing room that somebody can say something if he's not in a competition with the guy.